Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Rox, and I am coming to you today with the Rox Ecology installment number 13. Yes, I got my hair in a ponytail. I cannot tell you when's the last time I wore my hair in a ponytail. I think probably when I had braids, which was before I moved to Atlanta. So, yeah, I have not had my hair up in a long time. But uh, I was watching, what's the cute little girl named Morgan? What's her name? She always wears curly hair on YouTube. Anyway, she did this with this scarf. And this scarf actually wasn't big enough. This was one of Jada's scarves. But anyway, I put my hair up. But anyway, yeah, my whole face. All that. <laughs> you guys, I only have a few letters. So this one is not going to be that long. A couple of the letters are longer. I'm going to go on and, and, and allow it since this is uh, only have like four or five letters. So anyway, let's get to it. Hello, Rox. I know this may sound weird. And yes, even juvenile. But what should we as women do when we have sex dreams? And does that mean I still kind of like him? Then on top of that, he has asked for pictures of me. He has asked me to move to the movies and afterwards we made out and stuff <laughs> uh, what i don't even know what you asking me okay i'm not laughing at your letter let's ask answer the first question um what does it mean when you have sex dreams who knows what it means when you have sex dreams um people have sex dreams i mean just because something happens in your dream does not mean that you want it to happen in real life i mean we've had sex dreams or we've had sex with our brothers or uncles or cousins or some shit like that you know good and damn well in real life you don't want to have sex with them right yeah your dreams are not always literal and you know it might just be a whole bunch of stuff that's going on in your mind that has all just decided to to form a story when you go to sleep so I you know I, no that doesn't necessarily mean how do you feel about them when you awake do you like them when you're awake um I think you would know then how you felt about them I guess you're talking about an ex-boyfriend I mean you just kind of not really clear what you're talking about if it's an ex-boyfriend if you're asking me if whether or not you like them i mean i couldn't tell you whether or not you like them you only you know if you whether or not you like them if you making out with them and everything and you going out with them then what is the problem here like why <laughs> i'm so confused <laughs> but i can tell you as far as the dreams no that doesn't necessarily mean that you still kind of like them it could mean it or it could not i think you would do better judging how you feel about somebody when you're awake and alert and can think straight so that's it <laughs> did anybody else know what she was talking about i was so, so confused wasn't you <laughs> about two weeks ago i went to my local 99 cent store to pick up two items a candy bar and some vaseline i awkwardly made eye contact with this old black man he looked about 65 years old i quickly looked down and then hurried along down the aisle he came whipping around the corner from where he was i could see out the corner of my eye hawking around I turned around and there he was waiting. He said to me, I was a very tall girl. He asked me if I played sports and we talked for a bit. He wanted to get me playing basketball and saw potential in me. As old people will do, he had a way of pulling me in. Every time I tried to cut the conversation off, he would find a way to buy more time. He asked me if I had a boyfriend. I said yes, promptly. He asked me how old I was, what he did, and where he lived, and how long have we been together. Also personal, right? I defensively answered all the questions in a bit of rage. I felt like he was trying to come on to me and mix business with pleasure. I'm very much into horoscope and astrology and believe that this man was a gateway into success, which my horoscope mentioned me signing a contract. That was the only reason why I entertained that fool. The man proceeded to tell me I didn't love my boyfriend and that was that it was pure lust. He gave me his number to call him so we could meet up and I could show him my skills on the court. He said smoothly he wanted to take me out to eat, but since I had a boyfriend, he wouldn't. I laughed it off and he said our, we said our goodbyes. Well, fast forward, I curiously synchronized my contacts with Facebook and his Facebook pops up. He said his name was William, but it's really Wilbert. I view his page and he is married. I never saw a ring on his finger. That disgusted me. And after I kept digging, I found out that he's a pastor. He has a daily post about the Lord and Jesus and words of motivation and spiritual relations. Even about how the devil is going to get, is out to get people. Oh, the irony. After drying my eyes and feeling bad for knowing all that, I just find out I started to have pity for myself and his wife and family. I later see his wife's fa Facebook. I contact her with a simple hi. Minutes later, I regretted it for some reason, but then I didn't because if, if I was her, I'd want to know. I shared with this man where I live in the same town as him, where I'm attending college and my future profession in law enforcement. He was... He too was, 
was sharing his life events and previous work in law enforcement. I now fear for my safety because he has my number and possibly soon my name. And I've already contacted his wife with a hi. I want to expose this man at heart, but I also didn't know if that would be the wisest thing to do considering how small my city is and his devilishly ways. What do you think I should do now? Girl, now y'all know Rocky Love. You always got to start these <laughs> these kind of letter answers off with y'all know Rocky Love. You. First of all, I need you to get a grip on reality. People don't just get discovered in 99 cent stores by just some old random man, okay? People work hard at whatever their craft is and somebody then notices their talent and then that's how they get signed on. I don't really know all about the um, horoscopes and astrology and all that. I mean, you know, I follow it loosely enough, but not nothing that I just 100% totally believe and guide my day on. So you're in the 99 cent store, you meet this random man. He's 65 years old. Are you uh, attracted to him originally? Like, I don't even understand why you would give somebody like that the time of day. If you weren't interested in him, if you already have a boyfriend, then what is you sitting up there talking to this man for? Why are you giving him all this information about you? Just because your your horoscope told you that you, you somebody was going to sign your contract. Now, what made you think that he was the one that was in charge of your destiny? I'm telling you, this don't make no sense, girl. So you done told this man all your information. Obviously, he had pulled you in and enough where you was interested. Because I'm telling you, if I was your age, I'm assuming you're in your early 20s, you know, late teens, early 20s, something like that. If a man came up to me in the grocery store or the 99 cent store, um, approached me and starts asking me all these personal questions about me. It's obvious that he has more interest in my personal life and not nothing that he wants to help sign me on as a basketball player. I would cut it, you know. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, this, this, just, this, none of this makes sense to me. So, first of all, you, I don't think you being all that truthful. You have some interest in this 65 year old man in order for you to sit up there and talk to him and uh, give him all your information like that. So that's the first problem that I have here. The second problem is you go home, you get on Facebook, you find out that the man lied to you and that he's a pastor and that he's married and all of that. And uh, what did you expect? You guys don't have a relationship. You guys don't even really have a friendship. You just met this man. Ain't no telling what people can tell you. Why do people trust folks? Like just like at face value, somebody tell you something and you just be like, that's what it is. No. So now you find out that he's a married and that he's a pastor, and now you want to expose him. Why? What is what? First of all, he didn't really do nothing to you. Okay, he told you. I mean, it was all this innuendo, and it was all this hinting around the fact that he, you know, was interested in you. But he was smooth enough and smart enough not to just come out and say anything. As far as that conversation, as far as he's concerned, he was counseling you. He's a pastor. If you was if anything was ever to come out, yeah, he would just be like, I saw this girl in the store or something, and the Lord led me to speak to her and I was counseling her, letting her know that her boyfriend, you know, he was he was lusting her because I felt that. Okay, so that's that's how that's going to turn out. So, yeah, I wouldn't, it ain't no sense of you going out exposing the man. Because really, the man ain't done nothing. Really, you was the one that gave my information, which was really silly to me. Okay? But we all make mistakes. So, I'm just, uh, let's just don't do this again. Okay? Let's, let's learn from this mistake. Then, you want to go and tell his wife? Like, why are you even causing even more pro problems for yourself? I mean, if you're scared of the man, but then you want to tell his wife, but nothing really happened between the two, you know, girl, you just you just need to leave all that alone, okay? That man ain't going to bother you. He is going to leave that alone. If he does contact you, whatever, you let him know that you know that he lied to you, that he's married, that he's a pastor and all that, and guaranteed he will leave you alone. But yeah, you was tripping on that. Don't be giving your information to no old-ass man in no 99-cent store who... Just because your horoscope told you that day that you was going to sign a contract that you thought that this person was going was your destiny and was going to lead you to... No, girl. No. 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 Okay? Just no. Don't do that no more. Okay? You know Rocky love you. I know I know things be... <laughs> I know we sometimes get a little misguided, but yeah, don't do that again. First, let me start by saying, love your vlogs and your reviews. I am a 30-year-old woman, and the man I am writing you about just turned 35. I met a guy on a social website about six months ago whom I've fallen in love with. He is, was, a wonderful guy. We talk every day via phone and ov uvu. 
The problem is he lives in another state. However, we have met face to face. He flew in to meet me and uh, we had a great time together that weekend. Since then, the relationship has changed. He claims he feels the same, but states I have been different. I say he has changed. However, the relationship between us is basically non-existent. On Mother's Day, he completely blew up on me and told me to forget about him. Don't call him, text him, message, oogle, anything ever again. When we do have a conversation, I really don't know what to say because I don't know what triggers his attitude. I don't like walking on eggshells, period. Now, typically, I would curse a guy out if he ever spoke to me that way. Really gave him the business. But in this situation, I just cried and hung up. Honestly, I don't know. A, honestly, I don't have a clue what triggered this. He blew up on me for no reason at all, honestly. Since then, we haven't talked much at all. Two weeks after this big blow up, he messaged me saying that he loves me to take care and be good. Since then, he has messaged me once again, but basically just to see how my week was and to have a good weekend. I am so confused, so I messaged him back asking what does the future hold for our relationship because the sporadic messages he sends aren't telling me much. He never messaged back. Well, today is his birthday, and I messaged him well for him well wishes for his birthday. I never got a reply and I know he saw the message. I am not insecure by any stretch of the imagination or desperate. I'm not sure what this is about. I am not sure what it is about this man that I can't shake. The fact that he is basically ignoring, ignoring me really hurts me and is bothersome. I've never been ignored actually. What in the world should I do? What do you, do you think is up with him? Please help me. Okay, I hate to say this, but you know, when we meet people over the internet or something like that, and you just have a relationship where you just like an emotional connection where you're just talking to them and there's no physical connection, yeah, you can grow close with someone. That is probably what happened with the two of you guys. Now, when he decided to come out and meet you, and you guys had a cool time because you guys already knew that you got along, you spoke well on the phone and on Uvu and all of that, but once he got with you, it just doesn't seem like he was really all that interested anymore. When he got back home, he probably had decided that, no, you weren't exactly what he wanted a lot of men do this okay they're not real clear on what they want but I also think that women ignore the signs and keep on trying to figure out something when they're very obvious if he's not calling you if he's not texting you if he's not ooing you if he's not talking to you like he used to then he's not interested anymore he doesn't really know how to tell you he's hoping that you're gonna be one of those ones that just get the picture and just kind of leave him alone um, but you're not, okay? You just keep on waiting for him to have this conversation with you that, no, it's not working. I don't. Well, he actually even, you said that he said that. To leave him alone, don't call him more no, no more, don't text him no more. What else do you want the man to tell you? I know that it was all this passion and everything, the six months, it was a whirlwind. You guys were talking and doing all of that, but he's just not, he's just not interested anymore. He probably might like to think of you as some sort of friend. Maybe that's why every now and then he decides to send you a text message. I mean, that part is, is kind of confusing, but I would just cut all that all together because he, he doesn't, he don't, he don't, he don't want to be with you, honey. I'm sorry. Then the fact that, you know, you said that you've never been ignored before, um, that can also, that can charge a woman, okay? If we're used to getting the attention that we get from men, everything kind of just flowing the way a regular relationship progresses, then you get somebody that all of a sudden ain't doing what all the rest of the ones that did. Now we want to figure out why. Don't try to figure out why. He just don't. So now you trying, and now it's bothering you that he is ignoring you, okay? It's the transferring of power. Did you guys ever see, um, who can play that game i'm telling you even that movie is so true okay it's just the transfer of power he has the power because he don't give a fuck no more and you the one that's still chasing behind him trying to find out what it is he is not interested anymore okay that is what it is I know you guys had a great time on the phone and doing all that, but in, in person, it you just wasn't what he wanted. And uh, that's not saying that you're ugly or unattractive or anything. It's just whatever it is, you are not it. I wouldn't be trying to keep on chasing after him and trying to figure out what it is. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. The same way you met him on the internet, you can meet somebody else on the internet. Maybe you might need to meet somebody that's in your hometown. And I'm not saying that de dating from the internet doesn't work. Because I have a friend actually that got married from somebody that she met on the internet. So I'm not saying that it doesn't work. However, you have to be a little bit more cautious. And uh, 
I think the first thing that you need to do is try to find somebody that's in your town so that you can meet them right away and you ain't got to invest all these feelings just for it to fall apart like this. Okay, so that's that's it. Okay, good luck to you. My question pertains to a situation that I am in romantically. I have been speaking to this gentleman for a year and a half now. This is a man, by the way. We met online and have since met in person a plenty a plethora of times we have very good chemistry with one another and when we speak there is never a dull moment he takes genuine genuine interest in my feelings as do I with his and for the past year our text and phone conversations have become very relationship-esque he speaks so affectionate to me as if I were his boyfriend for instance that the typical I love you has been said after about a year of knowing one another atop many other sweet nothings that seem to be really genuine I, of course, am flattered and oftentimes am re rendered speechless by his display of affection. When we meet up, usually at the movie theater or mall, the chemistry is so potent. The problem, however, comes in the fact that it has been a year and a half and no pro progression has been made in our status. I approached him with a somewhat of a relationship proposal a few months after meeting him, but he turned me down before I approached the explicit question of asking him to be my boyfriend. It has been a year that day, and the connection between us romantically has only grown stronger. It's just... A confusing juxtaposition. He speaks to me as if he wants to be with me consistently, but no progression is made. Should I give up on this and keep myself open to dating, or should I continue in, to invest myself into this guy? Thank you, Rox. I love your videos. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what I would do. I would have a serious conversation with this guy and ask him whether or not I'm wasting my time. A lot of people are just comfortable with just dating, okay, and not, you know, progressing a relationship, not moving on to the next step. And that's fine. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. But that's not what you want to do, okay? And that's not what I would want to do. I want, would want to move on to the next step. So I would have this conversation with him and say, listen, it's been a year. And um, I need to know exactly where you and I stand, okay? If we're just going to be just friends, then we need to be just friends. We need to cut the romantic part of it. And I need to move on to somebody else. I don't want to just date somebody. I want to be in a serious relationship with, with just one person. A lot of times, people... I'm, you know, I'm assuming this is probably the same in gay relationships. Um, they want to keep their options open. If they don't say that they are definitely tied down to someone, that gives them the opportunity and the leeway to still see other people. And then, okay, and then if you were ever to catch them, they could say, oh, no, we're not together. Okay, we just friends. You knew I was dating or I never said I was your boyfriend or anything like that. So, yeah, this is what this sounds like to me. Now, it might not be that. And maybe he might need to just get the fire lit up under his ass. But, um, yeah, if, if you feeling like this has been long enough and that it's time to move on to something else, then have the conversation with him. And if he still want to pussyfoot around it, then if you feel like you can't hang around for that, then just move on to somebody else and uh, cut it. Because you should not be romantically linked to a friend. All right, you guys, so that's it. It is hot out here. You guys can see my face just a glistening. If you guys have any questions for Rocks Ecology, send it to the email address that's on the screen. It's forwardsrocks at gmail.com, and I will answer it here on a video, okay? Make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is Forwards Rocks, and everything else I do will be in the bottom bar below. All right? All right. So I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I plan on doing the same. Until next time, Rockstars. Bye.